Hi guys, and thank you for watching Planting Paradise. Um, last time you watched me chop up my Cal and Chloe, and today we are going to go over some propagation methods. Um, there's a few ways to propagate. Now, um, I've never done all of them at once, so it'll be really interesting, almost an experiment to kind of see which is the best method for this particular plant. Um, so what we have here is some sphagnum moss that's just soaking in water. We're going to do a water propagation as well as a peat and perlite mixture here on the right. Um, please excuse the shadows. The sun is kind of just moving in and out today. Okay, so here we have one of the cuttings. If you take a look there on the bottom, if you take a look at the bottom there, you see those little white lines. Those are actually aerial roots that were produced by the plant when it was still attached to the mother plant. Um, so generally for this type of plant that produces aerial roots, I like to use sphagnum, but we're gonna give all the methods a try today. Um, but this is already a really great start for this plant. It is incredibly easy to propagate. What I did here was I actually removed the bottom few leaves which will propagate on its own as well so that we can make sure that we reduce that chance of root rot by the leaves sitting in there. When I propagate by leaves it takes a lot longer and what I generally do is I just have the peat or um, soil in a shallow dish which I'm not going to do today and I just place it right on there. I don't bury it at all like I'm going to show you um, that I do with the stems. What we are going to do is we are just going to pull off these leaves. Um, I'm just gonna grab it and pull it. It's gonna come right off by the base, perfect. And because that base is mostly still there, you can kind of see where it attached to the stem. It's got that circular appearance. That's where the new baby roots will come in. We're gonna do that to all of these. I grip by the middle of the leaves. Okay. Now I would advise you not to wait too long to propagate these because some of these are getting a little bit soft so they're getting a little dehydrated. Okay. Now what I'm going to do with my sphagnum is I am actually going to just pick it up and squeeze it mostly dry. Oop, let me see if I can get all of it. Just gently squeeze so that it's damp. And I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my plant and I'm just gonna wrap it in this magnum. I don't want to just stick it into this magnum because the sphagnum can actually detach the little baby aerial roots and kind of make things go backwards. We'll lose them. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it right in the cup here. I did not account for how big the cuttings will be. I tried to put it into the cup and it didn't quite fit. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to go ahead and wrap the bottom in the sphagnum. Right there, if you can see. And that's just going to provide the moisture without drowning the roots um, because the plants will actually produce a different type of root um, if it's grown in water versus if it is grown in a more porous aerated material like this sphagnum. So I am going to go ahead and try to take two, put this in the cup here. And then the other thing I like about sphagnum is 
it's relatively big so I can put little aeration holes into the cup along the side here and that's just going to make a difference when the roots actually appear um, because then it has good aeration and drainage um, which will develop healthier stronger roots so um, what you could do also is you can drill holes along the bottom here but i choose not to because it just makes it easier when i'm putting it on a windowsill and i don't want it to leak all right and then the water propagation is really easy you literally take a cup of water and you stick the plant right in there and that's it okay and with your peat and perlite mix, you can also just do 100% peat or 100% perlite. All you're going to do is you are going to just stick the plant stem right in. And it's just so soft that I'm not as concerned about wrapping it like I was with the sphagnum. Okay. Okay, and you just want to push it in a little bit, just enough so that it touches, and it will actually um, root itself and stabilize itself. Okay. So here we go. And then if you want it to maintain the humidity, if you don't have a good proper humidity system, what you could do is you can take a Ziploc bag, cut off the corners here, so that you get a little bit of airflow. Okay, and then you open it. Blow into it just to open it up and then you place it right over the plant. And this is actually a pretty good fit, so it's not gonna fall. Um, but this is um, just gonna maintain the moisture and the humidity to help it along with the root growth and make sure it doesn't get dehydrated before the roots develop. Now you can customize these holes depending on your environment. If you tend to have a more humid environment, like if you are in a bathroom, then you can cut bigger holes um, or you probably don't even need the bag. Um, if you are in an environment where you have very low humidity, you can just leave the bag intact and don't even snip off the tips. So that's what I like about the customization, customization um, aspect of it. Um, and then what you'll do is just place this in a bright light and I'll update you in a week. So it's been about 10 days or so. I checked it at seven days, but it wasn't as rude as I'd hoped. So based on just a water cup. So I decided to just leave them in for a little bit longer so that we can take a look. Um, you can see them all in their original setup here. I have the peat and perlite, and then we have this magnum moss here. Um, so we're gonna take a look and see which one rooted the best, um, but they are all very sturdy, so they have all rooted. First, we're gonna do the water. Look at that, guys. Oop, let me just put this. Look at that, guys. Look at those beautiful roots. Sorry, it's dripping all over. Again, really easy to root. We're going to put this back. Okay. I'm going to do this magnum next.
so they're not as long but there's more of them and you can see that they're actually a little bit thicker than the ones that are rooted in water these will actually transition much better to soil it's not water roots which means that they are used to more of the aeration and less of the moisture versus the ones that are rooted to water but again these just tend to be survivalist and they tend to do really well in all conditions so i'm going to put this here last but not least we're going to do the perlite I'm gonna go ahead and just do this off camera because it's gonna be a little bit of wrangling to get them out there and I'll probably have to rinse off the roots. But you can actually see that there are some roots developing right on top, simply from the humidity in the air from the cup. So I'll be right but back you can after see I that ease these out. really developing a good ball of roots 360 all the way around the stem. So I think in conclusion, what we learned with this particular plant is the water rooted very well from certain nodes and it grew more long roots, whereas the peat grew many small short roots and not as quickly. And the sphagnum moss grew just a ton of short, strong, thick roots ready to go into soil. So I would say if I had to do this again, I'd probably go with the sphagnum moss. Um, but I guess we'll see once we pot them up and see how everyone does. So that's our little experiment. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, it's really just for this one species uh, of plants um, that I can say that I've done this for. But otherwise, I will continue my experiments and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, guys.